Okay, good morning. So uh, this is the session related to the services in AGI. I will do an overview on the use cases uh, description. I'm Andrea Manzi from uh, AGI Foundation. Uh, so um, I start with the general housekeeping information. So all the microphone will be uh, muted uh, during the session. So please also deactivate the video unless you are the costing, uh, the will as the cost will give you permission. If you want to uh, make question, post question, please raise your hand. Uh, the presentation are available in Dico. Uh, you can see the session in the, in the timetable. And um, the session will be, uh, the agenda of the session will be uh, first with an introduction and a discussion on the GI data services. And then uh, we have a presentation from uh, Sergei Gorianin from ECRAN about the ECRAN metadata repository MDR for, cl for clinical study objects. And uh, then a uh, uh, talk from uh, Cedric Serfon from BNL about the data management in Bell 2 experiment. And at the end, we'll have a Q&A session at the, end of, uh, the, uh, at the end of the session. Uh, follow this, uh, this, session, this, uh, this initial session on the GI data services. We will have also a clinic sessions to, in parallel um, on uh, one data and uh, DPM and uh, Dynafed. Uh, one data will be um, uh, so the, the speaker will be Lukas Tutka, and uh, for the DPM and, and the Dynafed Clinic uh, will be Fabrizio Furano. So we have a possibility also to. Uh, so they will introduce, you know, the 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 project and the latest feature of the components, uh, and then you will have the possibility also to speak uh, and discuss discuss about uh, you know um, installations issues that you have or uh, you know status of the project. Um, so starting from the GI data service, um, I will cover the three main categories of services that we have in GI for data, the data hub, the online storage, and the transfer. And at the end, I will uh, briefly uh, describe a little bit what are the plans to finance the GI data offer. Um, we, so starting from the first service, which is the latest one that uh, is, uh, is available for, uh, for our communities, the GI data hub. So the data hub is the service that is based on the GI technology, the one data technology. It, uh, it allows transparent data access uh, using a common space, regardless of the location of the data. And the access can be open or restricted to a member of the particular virtual organization. The, um, it offers the possibility to access data via GUI or APIs, uh, allowing also replication between providers in order to have uh, resiliencies and, uh, and availability. A replication can be done either on demand or automatically. And uh, it's easily, uh, can be disintegrated with other AGI components and also other uh, user communities infrastructure because it's already integrated with the AGI check-in service, which is the AGI authentication authorization service infrastructure uh, and the AI. The, um, Architecture of the component. So we have uh, the one zone, which is the component that is uh, responsible for the aggregation and uh, of the uh, data providers, uh, which is connected with GGI check-in. And uh, all the providers, uh, their name one provider in the architecture of uh, the component, are the ones that are uh, managing the, the storages. And um, uh, clients can be either you know HTTP or um, UI or REST and CDMI clients can uh, or also uh, one client which is, can mount the, um, the provider as VFUs can uh, connect uh, with one provider and uh, users can create uh, data spaces on top of the um, physical location of the uh, physical storage location of the one providers. The, um, uh, in AGI we have the different service option for the data hub so we have um, for testing purpose, we have um, a playground uh, space, which is open to anyone that would like to do some testing and evaluation, but it's, you know, the space is quite limited and uh, the storage is shared between all the members that, uh, that are accessing, so just for evaluation. And then uh, users um, can create empty spaces and provide or ask for storage support via the one provider. This is possible via either installing one of the providers on infrastructure or contacting AGI in order to support, uh, to request the storage support from the AGI Federation providers. And this is done according to SLA to be agreed with the providers. Or we have also communities that may decide to have a customized, customized installation of the uh, data hub uh, for particular purpose. For instance, uh, the one that we installed for Panos. And this is something that we can of course discuss if you contact the support for the installation. So what the 
one of the characteristic of um, I will show now all the one of the, the different characteristic of the of the service. So basically, uh, of course, you can perform file and uh, share management. So for each space, user can manage files stored at one provider. Uh, so you perform the usual file operation. Uh, the directory can be shared publicly, and this is uh, also and uh, eventually these um, shares can be published via uh, handle service, and you can have a pers uh, persistent identifier design. The, um, the the service offer also replica and transfer management. So, see if the spaces are supported by multiple one providers, the data can be distributed, and also uh, the distribution and from data migration or data balancing. And uh, this, this can be uh, scheduled uh, via uh, the web interface, as you will see, you know, from the from the description here, or uh, from REST API. And recently, uh, the when, when data has introduced also the support for QoS. Uh, there was a talk uh, yesterday during the AGI data transfer working group work, uh, workshop about uh, this latest feature done by Lukash. So you can see the link here. Um, for metadata management. Um, the, the the service uh, allows also to associate associate metadata to files. Uh, this is possible uh, in three forms, or either uh, key value pairs, JSON, or RDF. Uh, this is possible to create indexes via REST API, and uh, the service expose uh, as well the um, metadata harvesting via OAPMH interface. This is one example of this. Um, recently, the uh, other feature that has been introduced is the harvester management, so the possibility to uh, automatically extract metadata from files that are published to space. Metadata uh, then are, um, the, the metadata updates are then pushed to external indexes. For instance, the one, of, one example could be Elasticsearch and uh, they're automatically synchronized once you know the, the data are uh, updated. Uh, it is possible also to add uh, um, a GUI as a, a plugin for a search interface. And this is something that uh, uh, the use case of the MDR uh, implemented by Ekren will uh, will uh, will uh, will show later. And um, as I said, uh, uh, there is possibility also to access uh, uh, the storage via POSIX mounting uh, the one provider locally. Uh, this is a component that is called the one client that can be used in order to uh, uh, mount the one provider using a particular token. This is possible uh, easily either installing the, the component or um, using the Docker uh, container. And uh, the one particular um, uh, one peculiarity of this is that uh, if the files that uh, if the one if you try to access one space that is mounted between different one provider, uh, if the file is not available to the current uh, mounted one provider, the system will automatically uh, transfer the file from another uh, one provider that is supporting the same space. The installation uh, of the one provider is um, uh, has been automatized. Basically, there is uh, just to run one script, which will also uh, request a uh, SSL certificate uh, during the installation. Uh, this SSL certificate will be coming from Let's Encrypt. And um, there are different uh, supported backends, uh, POSIX, S3, Swift, uh, Ceph, and in cluster FS. So this um, this for the overview of the, the data hub. So I you will see also some documentation and uh, links to the documentation and to uh, one data of course. Uh, now moving on the um, online storage. The Basically, the, it's a category of services which uh, provides uh, uh, provide uh, access to data to different protocols uh, and replicate also data across different other sensors for the increased default, default tolerance. Uh, there are like um, it provides access to high ugly scalable storage from anywhere, controlling data sharing, and uh, it allows also to uh, organize data using a, a flexible hierarchical structure. Uh, it's possible so uh, for one of the service part of the category to extend the storage resources coming for the compute instances and assign also global identifiers to files. So what the three different category of services, which uh, fails also the online online uh, storage option are the object storage, file storage and block storage. So which are, um, of course provides uh, different uh, interfaces according to different implementation. 
So for MG storage, for instance, in MI Swift OS3, for PyStorage, SRM, WebDAV, POSIX, uh, but also XRD and others. And then, of course, uh, block storage mounted directly on the, on the, um, on the virtual machines. Um, the, um, we're providing you know, different category of uh, services. So if, uh, if you see the HT, uh, DJI HT Federation and Cloud Federation, uh, we um, HT provide, uh, HTC providers are uh, the ones that uh, um, are using the uh, file storage. Of course, they are also providing file storage in most of the cases. For cloud providers, everyone is providing, of course, a block storage, and some of them are also um, providing the object storages. Uh, so starting from the file storage description, um, so it's um, using for uh, storing and accessing files on infrastructure as input out for the AGI HTC computation. Uh, the AGI workflow management system, which is DRAC, is able to access file storage in, in the file storage instances via different protocols and uh, able to, access, so to schedule the computation in order to be executed close to where the input files are stored. And uh, it implements also file cataloging. Uh, the technology that uh, are available in infrastructure are um, DPM, Dcache, and Storm, having different interfaces uh, as before. So SRM, which is also under the commission in some of the endpoints, HTTP, WebDAV, XRD, GSFTP, or CDMI. The, um, uh, for block storage, uh, it's the solution that allows to expand the storage capacity uh, of the instance of the the GI federated cloud, and uh, basically it's the low offers the the lowest possible latency for application. Uh, it's used mainly to increase the storage to a given instance so without increasing the size of the capacity, and uh, of course this is used when you know keeping the data intact when you delete a service. Um, so the technology enhancing this is uh, for the OpenStack provider is OpenStack Cinder, and then the interface is uh, you can have POSIX access or uh, for access or OCCI and OpenStack uh, CLI and, and GUI for, for management. And the uh, last one is the object storage, which provides uh, the storage of data as object uh, with the possibility to extend it with the metadata and uh, assign a globally unique identifier. Um, the main uh, characteristic of the object storage is that uh, allows uh, uh, relatively inexpensive and scalable at same time retention of massive amount of unstructured data. And uh, the category of uh, the main uses, the main user can use case for this um, uh, for this type of uh, storage are uh, backups and data archive, uh, AI and uh, machine learning, and uh, cloud native application. Technology available in infrastructure, so an OpenStack Swift and Ceph with the uh, exposing interface like uh, S3, Swift, and CDMI. Um, so uh, talking about service access, we have, uh, so for the file storage, uh, we have uh, standard interfaces for data access. Uh, there are different uh, CLI tools and libraries available for this. For the, let's say, grid-based storage protocols, so SRM, GSI, GSI FTP, and XRD, um, we recommend the, cho the recommended choice is the GFA2 library, which is developed at CERN, and the CLI. Uh, for HTTP and WebDAV, uh, of course, we have access via standard clients like uh, Curl. And the authentication to JSON is been uh, currently on X509, but of course, the, um, there is a transition to GWT tokens that has been pushed uh, and coordinated by WCG. So me, at the moment, there are also some uh, testing endpoints which are uh, available uh, and accessible via AGI check-in. Uh, and of course, this is what uh, what will push also in the infrastructure in order to, in the future, uh, have uh, um, X509 less uh, um, uh, access. For the block storage, so I said the storage is mounted directly on the virtual machine. For the object storage, uh, we have, uh, so for the um, uh, Swift implementation, you can use either the, the OpenStack CLI for the to access object and containers. And then, uh, for, of course, if the for object storage interfaces are disposing also S3 or CDMI protocols, you can use any command line for the or library for CDMI in S3. There is also the option to put in front uh, DynaFed, which is also uh, something that we can explore later on during the clinic, uh, which will enable object storage access via X509 and the auth. And uh, this is something that um, of course, uh, um, the capping, you know, the, 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 there is a documentation online for the for the for the um, online storage. You will see also the service description, the Java workplace, and the marketplace uh, entry. Uh, then uh, moving to data transfer, the 
the data transfer is uh, in AGI is uh, based on the FTS service, which is developed at CERN. Um, and this can be one of the, uh, the, the main uh, characteristic of the, of the service. It will allow, you know, it allows uh, interaction, uh, is interaction for submitting transfer and uh, also a web interface for this with real time monitoring and web admin. Uh, the services uh, ensures reliability and uh, integrity because uh, there are like uh, checks on per transfer and retries and provided. There is possibility to, uh, so it offers also multi-protocol support, so it's quite flexible and scalable. Uh, and uh, uh, you can have uh, parallel transfer scheduling optimization uh, to get, you know, uh, uh, the most from the network without burning the storages. And uh, uh, it offers also priorities and activities support for transfer classification. The service, uh, uh, so going to this, the, the component, uh, as I said before, there is transfer scheduler. You can, um, for each link, uh, trans you can prioritize uh, links for each transfer for each link according to the priority, which is provided by the users. Activity shares, which are uh, weight associated to the transfer activities, kind of labels uh, assigned to transfers. And, uh, VR shares, which are linked uh, uh, weights associated to the virtual organization. Uh, with other component of the service, the transfer optimizer. Uh, basically, it uh, provides a uh, uh, possibility to um, optimize the, the parallel transfers uh, on a given link according to the characteristic of, the, according to the bandwidth and the throughput at the given time. Um, this uh, allows both the um, optimization of the number of transfers uh, in parallel, but also the optimization of the number of streams. Uh, this is based uh, on the file size and the transfer queue. For instance, uh, if there are a number, enough transfers on a link, uh, usually we use only one stream per file, but of course this uh, will uh, evolve according to the number of the queue and the, and the file size. Uh, there are a number of uh, user tools and APIs available in order to interact with the service. So RESTful API, uh, Python using bindings and CLIs, we have also C++ uh, CLIs, and uh, it, in, it integrates with the different uh, data management frameworks. For instance, Erosio, FedEx, Dirac, uh, this is something that uh, also we will see later uh, in the presentation of uh, uh, Bell 2. Uh, other main features, uh, there is also interaction and possibility to um, bring online files from uh, take archives. So basically, FTS can uh, uh, request uh, to uh, tape archives to to bring online files from storage supporting tapes. It uh, allows also multi-hop transfers. So you can have like transfer from um, given uh, storage A to C, but also you know uh, schedule transfer from A to B and then B to C according to your preference. And then uh, it also perform bulk file deletions, which uh, so clients can send a list of files to delete and FTS, FTS optimizes the interaction with the storages. And uh, as well, message integration, uh, because uh, this is something that uh, is used mainly for monitoring or basically all messages that can be um, produced uh, for uh, job and transfer state change and also optimize the decision. Um, as I said before, the, the multi-protocol support is uh, implemented through the GFAL2 library, which is uh, uh, which allows uh, you know supporting the weird plugins, different protocols, FTP, just FTP, uh, HTTP, XRT, SRM, but also cloud, uh, you know, S3, uh, G Cloud, and um, this is something that. Uh, uh, so depending on the protocol, of course, the transfer can be TCP, so they're party copy, so transfers between uh, different storage without, uh, you know, passing through the server. Or uh, FTS can also allow the protocol translation, which that uh, data can be streamed through the server um, if, if needed. And of course, by supporting all the different protocols, uh, uh, this supports also the different storage interfaces and before cloud DPM, uh, EOS, any other you know, service that is post, uh, the standard protocols that supported by, by, uh, by GFL2. And um, this is a diagram of course of the different uh, uh, protocols that are supported and the plugins that are implemented. Um, as I said, uh, there is a possibility also to schedule transfer via web uh, interface, which is the web, tra web FTS uh, is, um, web transfer management. This is uh, the instance that are available at CERN. 
and uh, for the for the for the instances that are available for AGI, we have uh, two production instances uh, since February 2019. The one at CERN, which uh, have uh, uh, so which basically um, providing the server plus the web interface interface and um, the, the one at STFC RAL and um, soon uh, the, um, the instances will be uh, upgraded in order to have new functionality on top the OEDC support, QoS or archive monitoring I, uh, yesterday this was uh, discussed during the GIADA transfer work group workshop uh, you can see, uh, you know, the link to the talk uh, by Mihai uh, uh, about the latest version of FTS 3.10 that is going to be released and then uh, soon uh, be um, deployed on the on the instances. Again, you know, some links related to the data transfer, uh, so the documentation and uh, uh, services and the link to the marketplace. So the last part. I am going to describe a little bit um, what are the um, plans for the new services uh, in the area of data in, in AGI. So um, starting from Rusio, uh, this is uh, the software that's uh, developed center for the management of the Atlas, Atlas uh, Leach C experiment, experiment data. But of course, it starts from uh, Atlas and then it's had integration by many uh, other communities and also outside of the uh, high energy physics. Um, it's a service that is extremely scalable and uh, it offers policy driven data management. Uh, the, I tell you that is going to be part of uh, uh, the AGI portfolio because uh, this is uh, included in the next uh, project, uh, AGI uh, flagship project, which is the AGI ACE. It's going to start in, uh, in January uh, next year um, and it will be operated by uh, STFC RAL uh, with the catch all instance multi VO, which uh, you know, with possible interface with Iraq as well. Uh, there is uh, linking also here uh, the talk about Rusio, uh, which has been done yesterday by Alistair uh, at the, the transfer workshop. And then uh, also, um, we'd like to, uh, we're, we're also discussing about the possibility to have uh, a Globus uh, EU instance operated by AGI, federated with the US one. Uh, Globus is the well known and uh, widely used service for the transfer and sharing, uh, which offers uh, easy UE and client installation. Um, it offers you know, the functionality for the transfer for free and of some other advantages of under feature and sharing for the under subscription. Uh, of course, this uh, this is the long uh, discussion that we are having. You know, to understand, you know, also the the needs and the interest of the EU communities for this particular uh, instance deployed in EU, and of course, understanding all the possible fundings in order to implement the the, um, the federation the approach. Uh, we are sharing uh, um, uh, a survey with the communities in order to understand uh, the, the the needs or the plan uh, possible interest of the, the services. I will also passed on the chat later on this, uh, this URL on the, of the survey. Uh, of course, if you can contribute with your input, that uh, will be really nice. And um, I also uh, pointed it here, put it here, the Globus, uh, a talk by Bas Vasiliadi from Globus uh, at the GIA transfer workshop that uh, yesterday, which uh, explains, you know, the architecture and the, and the feature of the, of the service. And then uh, later today, there will be a um, service design workshop, a new service proposal for AGI. This is um, uh, at today at uh, 3.30. Uh, we'll, there will be a presentation about uh, possible new services provided to AGI by communities, uh, three related to data, uh, the open source secure data infrastructure and, pro and processes. Uh, there will be a default science data catalog and the preservation storage, uh, which will give the possibility to you know, discuss a possible extension of the enhance, announcements of the data, uh, data service offer uh, with the, uh, services uh, coming from uh, um, other providers. Okay, I think that uh, for the first, uh, this, is, this is all for the, for the first talk about the overview of the data services. Um, I think that so we will have at the end of the session uh, time for the, for questions. So uh, please, uh, if you have question, we will uh, we will take it at the end of the of the of the session. So um, I'm going now to stop sharing and uh, give the floor to uh, Sergey.
Yep. Uh, no. Hello, everyone. It looks okay. No. Yep. Uh, can you see my screen? Uh, no, we see the, the GI conference. Uh, yeah, I see the screen, but not the presentation. Oh, that's strange. Now you should. Now let me check. And uh, now, yeah. Yeah. You should see my screen and uh, you should see my presentation. Okay. Yeah, okay, yes. Yeah. Very good. Uh, okay, hello everyone again, and uh, today I wish to present my data repository or MDR for clinical study objects. And um, first of all, I would like to talk about the problems which uh, scientists and clinicians face when they try to find necessary information about clinical trial they are interested in. And uh, first problem here is that uh, clinical research studies and data objects belonging to it are often skipped around. So they can be stored in different resources. It could be uh, a website or publication or repository and registry and so on. So it's very time consuming to collect all necessary information and to analyze and uh, take a look at. The second main problem is that uh, the mechanism for gaining access vary between different places and uh, different data objects. That means that uh, sometimes uh, data objects has uh, restricted access, uh, sometimes they are publicly available. So each scientist which are interested, interested in any information uh, had to go through all these uh, repositories and check whether this data object or study is available or not. Uh, the third problem here is uh, that uh, there is no agreed discovery metadata schema implemented and used for discovery. So it depends on each data source, they establish their own standard, which, com which makes uh, things very complicated to collect information and uh, analyze. So first they have to collect information, then uh, scientists usually uh, standardize this information before they start to analyze. And uh, the final problem here is that uh, the findability of uh, clinical studies and related data objects is difficult because of these uh, three problems. And uh, it's very time consuming process to, um, to work with uh, such information. Um, just a uh, uh, short uh, explanation about the background of metadata repository. So we work with uh, two main data types. It's a study and data object, and uh, the study data object, uh, the study object, uh, contains mainly the core information about clinical trial. It contains uh, uh, title, uh, study type, study uh, status, study topics, uh, alternative titles, and so on. And the data object is any information available in electronic form, which is a kind of extension for this uh, study. It could be a document or a data set or uh, any file like a spreadsheet or CSV file or a database or media file, etc. So, and these data types are linked between themselves and extend each other. So, come back to the problems. That's why I would say we decided to develop the M MDR mainly to maximize the discoverability of all these studies and related data objects. Uh, it's necessary to collect the metadata about them. And uh, yeah, that's what we did uh, within uh, this uh, metadata repository project and initiative, I would say. How we did that and how we implement the MDR so the portal itself is developed in collaboration with uh, one data and uh, nfn uh, we split out our roles between our partners so we as akron we we are in charge of uh, data preparation so we collect uh, all the information from different data sources we standardize it and after we push all this data to one data uh, we use one data platform to store all this data in JSON format. And after we provide access to this data for the final users via web interface, 
which is kind of um, uh, web plugin or extension for one data platform. And uh, I'm a fan. Uh, they support us um, with the hardware and they also developed uh, an Elasticsearch engine, which is a search engine for all this data on the web portal. So here is uh, an architecture of the current metadata repository solution. Um, so you can see that at the beginning, we analyze and process manually each data source. After that, we extract the metadata from each of those uh, data sources and put into individual databases and schemas um, with the saving original metadata structure. Then we run um, ETL processes, which uh, include mainly metadata standardization, linkage of this data, and cleaning from duplicates. We use our metadata schemas, which was developed by us, and uh, a standardized structure for studies and um, data object records. Each of those uh, schemas Metadata schemas are publicly available. I will show you later on uh, the access. So each record, which was processed by ETL process, insert into our core database, which we call MDR core database. After that, we convert each record into JSON format and uh, push all this file to one data, um, one provider. And uh, once they are injected into one data system. Uh, they are indexed uh, also by Elasticsearch and becomes available for the final users via web portal interface. Um, on this slide, I put the screenshot of the web portal interface, how it looks like, uh, but later on, I will demonstrate it practically, how we use it. So what we have now is the current progress of the metadata repository. So for now, we collected uh, metadata from, I think about uh, 18 data sources, including such core data sources like um, PubMed, clinicaltrial.gov, Biolink, Yoda, WHO, etc. cetera. Um, we developed single and universal metadata schema, which is available by clicking on uh, the JSON schema link here. And um, it contains the JSON schema, but we have also the structured re representation of uh, our metadata schema, which is available on uh, Zenodo. And uh, in total, we collected about 2 million records of studies and data objects, including for sure COVID-19 related clinical trials information and data objects. Um, also, we evaluated uh, kind of usability and user satisfaction of our web portal. We recruited uh, 14 uh, testers from clinical trials unit or national hubs of national scientific networks from uh, 12 countries and collected their feedbacks. So in general, I would say that they found the metadata repository very useful, user-friendly and easy to use tool. So we can say that they're very satisfied with the, this solution. Um, we got the support in the EOS Hub AAP. So within uh, this uh, initiative, I would say, we decided to revise the web portal, investigate the different mechanisms for accessing aggregate data stores, continue to develop Elasticsearch-based APIs to extend uh, the variations of access for to our data, uh, extend uh, the MDR demonstrator to run in production in uh, the EOS environment, make the MDR demonstrator part of the EOS ca catalog, collect data on user actions, and collect user feedback. But I forgot also to put the point that we also uh, prepared the new uh, data, which is uh, uh, ready now. And uh, probably in ne next week, we will start to inject this new data into the system and uh, they will be available for the users. Uh, if you want to see more details about our project, uh, uh, metadata schemas, um, data sources, etc. You can uh, find all this information 
in our wiki, which is publicly available. So uh, on the left side, you can see the menu and you can go through all these uh, uh, sections and uh, find information if needed. So for example, uh, in the context of uh, metadata schemas, you can see here an overview, example of uh, a study schema, how it looks like, the description of the schema. Uh, so, okay, sorry, I think that we don't see the other screen now. Oh, really? so if you're okay. showing the, the, page, the page, sorry. Oh, just uh, a second. Uh, can you see it? Yes. Okay, so now uh, here is our uh, wiki page. You can find all this information as I said, as I said before. So for example, if you're gonna uh, take a look at um, a study schema information, you can click on study schema uh, section. And here you can find the description of each uh, parameter in our schema, why we use it, um, in the description, uh, each more detailed description and explanation of each parameter, uh, and so on. So, if need, you can take a look at it and uh, find necessary information. So, now I wanted to demonstrate to you uh, how our MDR looks like and practically used. So you can print, you can type in your browser crmdr.org and after you will be redirected to the main page of the web portal. So in general, web portal is a single web page application, I would say. It's, as I said before, it's kind of plugin or extension of for the one data platform. So um, on top of it, you can see uh, the search panel you can uh, choose one of uh, the select mode uh, in the uh, select field. So you can find uh, any study by uh, specific study parameters, uh, kind of uh, trial registry ID, funders ID, uh, and others. Or you can use the study characteristic to find information, or you can use the published paper information. Uh, the left side is represented by the filters panel, which you can use to filter uh, fetched uh, data records. And uh, on the bottom side, you can see the footer with the, the disclaimer information, with the data source and organization information, contact information, and uh, uh, the main partners. Also, there is a help page where you can see um, the main instructor information, I would say, how to use our web portal. And uh, here you can find uh, the necessary instruction of any of all these three types of uh, search. So let's demonstrate. For example, I would like to find um, a clinical trial called Omiheart. So in the database, I found two records of Omniheart clinical trial. Uh, each record here is represented as an expansion panel. Uh, on the top of this panel, there is a study title. Uh, by clicking on it, you will see the description, brief description of this study and uh, the list of uh, related data objects. You can click uh, on access link, for example, and you will be redirected to the main page uh, to the source information of this data object. And uh, these icons provide information about the different types of access. So for example, this uh, data object is publicly available. So it has uh, public on screen access, but this um, uh, journal article uh, has a restricted download access. So, yeah. 
you can directly download this information, but you can read this article and probably request, uh, send the request uh, to the authors of this article and uh, ask them to send you more detailed information. So this is what I wanted to say and uh, demonstrate about the MDR. Okay, uh, thanks a lot, Sergey. Um, I think that, uh, as I said before, we'll have like uh, at the end of the session uh, a Q&A uh, part. So if you have questions, we will take it uh, at the end. Um, thanks a lot. So I will uh, I ask now uh, Cedric uh, Serfon from BNL for the next talk. Um, Cedric? Uh, we cannot uh, hear you, Cedric. He's going to reconnect. So. Okay, maybe in the meantime, I can ask a question about the MDR, so, so we don't fill the void. Um, Sergey, sorry, uh, I would like to ask you if, um, so how do you uh, handle in the MDR the updates of the repository? So if there are updates on the metadata updates on the, on the, on the repository side, this is something that uh, is automatically done or uh, you have like, automat like periodic uh, scanning? Uh, how, how do, you know, do you know how this is implemented? Okay. You lost us, is okay? No. <laughs> okay. In the meantime, I think Cedric is back. <laughs> <laughs> Cedric, uh, you can try to unmute yourself uh, now. Can you hear me? Yes. Very good. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, sorry for this. Uh, no problem. This issue. Um, yeah, so sh can I share the screen? Or? Yes, yes. Okay, well, then. Uh, uh, yeah, thanks for this invitation to the AGI uh, conference. So um, I would like to talk about uh, data management in the Bell 2 experiment. So uh, let's start first um, with a few words of, on Bell 2. So Bell 2 is a BFXX experiment located at KK, uh, Japan, in, uh, in Tsukuba. So well, this is an international experiment uh, where uh, about 26 uh, country uh, takes part. And uh, the, well, we started data taking last, last year and you can see on this plot the profile of the data taking during the next uh, 10 years. So, well, 
we, we are supposed to take uh, data for, for, for quite some time. So the L2 distributed uh, computing model um, is uh, geographically distributed. So this is using the grid and it aims at accomplishing several tasks like um, raw data processing and reprocessing, Monte Carlo production, physical analysis and data storage and data archiving. So uh, as you show, uh, as shown on the on the first slide, so we will have uh, significant increase of the, of the luminosity during the next uh, next uh, year, and uh, this translates into the storage uh, used for storing this data. So you can see between 21, 2021 and twenty twenty four, we are almost uh, multiplying by four the, the amount of data. Uh, the amount of disk that, uh, that we will have. One important aspect uh, of, uh, of data management in Tirac is the, the raw data distribution. So currently the data is produced at KK, stored uh, on tape at KK, and there's a, an additional uh, custodial copy in one, in, uh, one uh, raw data center that is BNL. So last year and this year, BNL is uh, hosting 100% of all the raw data produced uh, by Bell. But starting uh, next uh, year, uh, and due to the fact that uh, well the volume will be much more important, uh, the, the the computing model evolution uh, decide to 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 spread the the hosting of this uh, raw data onto six sites and not only in BNL. So the, the raw data cycle can be explained on this plot. So the data is produced on the, on the Bell 2 detector, uh, put on disk at KK, then a, a tape copy, a custodial tape copy is done at KK. And at the same time, the data is also pushed on one of the uh, of this um, uh, data uh, center that I mentioned before, uh, a copy. Then once the, the disk copy disappear, uh, after some time, the, the data can be recalled from tape uh, for, for reprocessing purposes. So the, the, the current infrastructure is the following. Uh, we use about 50, 15 uh, petabytes of data. Uh, and well, this, uh, this uh, storage element are uh, are split over over the world, so we have about twenty uh, storage elements. And the current infrastructure can work uh, without the support of SRM. So the way it supports GSFTP or HTTP web dev, and we have some grid FTP only endpoint register now. For the accounting of the space, there's a mix of the um, of the SRM based accounting and uh, and JSON uh, accounting. But uh, well, since more sites uh, will, will go SMS, uh, we will move uh, we move toward uh, more uh, sites with JSON accounting. So the, the services used by the data management. Um, so Bell2 uh, rely on Dirac both for the workload and data management. And there's an extension of Dirac that is called Bell Dirac that uh, that was done to fit uh, Bell students. So I, I will detail more in the next slide. But in addition to Dirac, there are uh, two external services that is used. The, the file catalog that is based on, uh, on the LFC. Uh, we have one instance at KK and FTS for file transfer. Here there's one instance at, uh, at KK and one at BNL. The, as I said, uh, data management is done through uh, Dirac with the, the, customiz well, the customization that is uh, Bell Dirac. So, uh, well, th th this uh, schema try to, to, to explain a bit, uh, well, uh, what, what this DDM component of the DRAC does. So it interacts with the, the primary SC, uh, push the request uh, for uh, transfer to DRAC, uh, uh, that push to FTS. So it also re re uh, uh, register the file in LFC. So it's doing a lot of things. Uh, it works well. It was developed a 
few years ago by uh, by a group that is not now in charge anymore of the of this uh, part of of the computing. So the the thing is that now, if any extension uh, are needed, it needs to come from Bell two. And um, once we we evaluated the, the work that would be needed in the coming years to to to, to challenge to 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 tackle the challenge of uh, increased uh, luminosity, we realized that um, okay, it might not be. Uh, maybe we should evaluate some uh, some other data management product uh, where we can get uh, support from uh, what community and this is why uh, we had we decided to to have a look at Rocio. so now bell 2 is in uh, is currently moving to Rocio. so this is not done yet uh, we are still in the process of certifying everything uh, but well it's coming soon and to prepare this this migration to show, uh, there were lots of features that it was developed to to fit belt belt to need. Um, well, first of all, the the belt to uh, the bell uh, Dirac was adapted. Uh, the, the the current DDM API uh, was adapted to use Rousseau instead of Bell Dirac. So the the API method stayed the same, but behind uh, Rousseau is contacted instead of Bell Dirac. And this allowed other services uh, interacted with DDM to have almost no change. One of the big uh, thing was also uh, the development of this Russian for catalog plugin in Dirac. So this allowed to do exactly the same thing as the, the LFC catalog. And well, this is something that can be definitely useful for other communities. Um, well, one thing was also to develop this chain, this called chain subscription that allowed to uh, to to do the export of the raw data as needed by uh, by uh, Dell, as I mentioned in the previous slide. And yeah, some well, different thing about monitoring. So migration to Russo is uh, well. To, to migrate to Rousseau, we did a multiple test, uh, both to validate the new feature of Rousseau and uh, the integration of Rousseau with the, with the Dirac. Everything worked fine so far. Uh, there was also some scaling tests to see if, uh, well, if uh, with the current infrastructure uh, we have at BNL, we can handle the, well, the load from, from L2. And yeah, it was validated to up to one order magnitude more than what the expected needs. We did also migration test of the LFC content into the LFC, and yeah, we we managed to import the LFC content uh, from from uh, from Bell into into Russo uh, within 14 hours. And um, okay, well, the everything is well under control. So in conclusion: uh, the Bell 2 experiment uh, will have a significant increase of the data produced and stored in the coming years. And to accommodate, to accommodate uh, this increase, uh, well, change uh, in the computing model uh, are being done, like for instance, moving from one to six uh, raw data center. Uh, another way to, 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 to address these, these challenges is the migration to, to Rousseau. Uh, we were expect to leverage the experience of bigger collaboration like Atlas uh, yeah, in the sense that we know that we show scale for Atlas needs. So if it's scale for Atlas need, uh, which is which has one of the many more data than uh, Bell 2, we know that it will uh, fit for, for, for Bell 2. And some of the development uh, that were done uh, in the context of this integration of Rousseau uh, with, uh, with Bell 2 like for instance the Russian file catalog plugin into the arc can potentially be used by uh, by other communities. So yeah, if you are interested to to use uh, Russo and the arc, uh, please stay tuned. Uh, more news will, will come. And that's it. Okay, thanks a lot, Cedric. Um, so, uh, so uh, it was very interesting, and um, we'd like to take some questions now. So, the last part of the session will be a Q and A. Uh, first of all, I have some questions. I mean, but first of all, I would like to see if uh, the audience have some questions uh, for the first part of the uh, talk. Uh, so, the so the talk related to the overview or uh, 
uh, MDR uh, from uh, from Sergey or the Bell Talk. So please, uh, if you have questions, uh, raise your hand, and then uh, we'll put it in the chat. Now you can also mute yourself if you want. <laughs> uh, if not, I so I will start with some question. No, Peter, uh, now is uh, yeah. Uh, Peter. Uh, hi. Uh, okay, I, I uh, mostly read of only all slides and didn't saw any information about the bright future of a Grid Community Toolkit. We know uh, this is going to be dropped by OSG at the end of next year. So, what mm -hmm. are the EGI plans? So we are in touch with the, I didn't mention this uh, because we are discussing with the WCG, of course, because the, uh, basically most of the developments in the area of uh, data management are, dri are driven by the WCG. So the, um, the idea now is to uh, understand, you know, uh, the usage of the components which are coming with the GCC, so uh, GSI and uh, Grid FTP mainly, but also my proxy, and uh, understand, you know, if, um, uh, how much time, you know, I mean, the effort that would be needed in order to move away of the component. And uh, most probably we will have to, together with the WCG, we will have to um, uh, come up with a plan in order to maintain uh, the GCC form longer, because we know that OSG is dropping the, the support by the end of 2021. And, uh, and for sure, I mean, they would be needed to, the need to maintain uh, this component for for more years. I believe also Bell is relying on <laughs> on uh, on these components, like when talking about the FTP and stuff like this. So this is not only something that uh, touch uh, you know the GI com the GI you know uh, VOs, but also other VOs like uh, as I said Bell. So I believe that this is something that uh, we'll continue to discuss with WCG, and then uh, we will understand uh, what are the I mean. The, the support needed in order to continue to maintain uh, the GCC for more uh, for more time, and in the meantime, you know, uh, taking uh, leveraging what the work that has been done by WCG, you know, pushing for, uh, you know, other you know protocols uh, instead of Grid FTP in the infrastructure, and also you know trying to uh, be less. Uh, um, to drop support uh, support for the X509 where the, where is possible, and uh, but this is something that uh, we st still. Uh, we didn't have like a, a plan for the for the moment for this, so this is something that we have to discuss together with uh, with WCG. I know that you are quite uh, active uh, in the HTTP <laughs> uh, in the transition to HTTP in WCG, so for sure, I mean that we will uh, uh, follow you know all the activities uh, in this area, and we'll try to apply the same for the other communities in AGI that uh, uh, will uh, will. Uh, uh, we work on this. And okay, I will follow uh, basically WLCG uh, Globus Retirement uh, activities. Yes, this we are going, for sure we are going to work together on this and uh, it's something that uh, we, are, we are in touch with, uh, with WCG operation. And um, other questions? I have one more. Yeah, sure, go on. <laughs> uh, uh, FTS multi-stream, was that really used somewhere in production on, or, and with, with which protocol? So we, uh, we have the, some communities that um, basically uh, can configure FTS in order to, by default, have multiple stream. So for instance, uh, you can configure the server if you are a view manager to say, okay, I want every transfer to be, uh, to have four stream or eight stream. And, uh, but it's been used uh, only with FTP. So I'm not aware of uh, using multi-stream with other protocols uh, uh, in production, I say, apart from testing, you know, HTTP and XROD, for instance. So grid FTP is the, has been used for sure, but, um, HTTP and XRD only for testing. So it's possible to do multi-stream for HTTP and XRD, but this is something that uh, I'm not aware that is used in production now.
more question from Pedro or from others? <laughs> Otherwise, I have some question uh, for starting from the first talk from Sergey. Um, so uh, I, I raised your question before, but maybe you were not uh, connected uh, at the time. You were, uh, you were not uh, listening to me. Um, so for the MDR, uh, how do you deal with the um, up update of the repository metadata? So if one of the repositories is already uh, under uh, MDR, I mean, it's already connected with MDR, is already published in the MDR, uh, how do you deal with the incremental updates of the repository? This is the one question that I have. Uh, yeah, so it depends on uh, the update. So if we are talking about some small and periodic updates, we use uh, their REST API and uh, update uh, the JSON files and uh, with uh, the metadata attached to, to these JSON files. If we are talking about some uh, major updates, kind of uh, when we modify the metadata schema, etc., etc., or we totally revise uh, the overall data package. We upload everything from scratch uh, on the one provider uh, by using their one data FS library, which is uh, a part of uh, Anaconda. So they provide such a um, one data FS library, which is kind of a extension of yep. uh, Python FS. Okay, really good. Um, and then I have a question if you have like uh, some statistic about the usage of the portal, if you get it, if you have like a uh, possibility to, to have the statistics uh, about um, I don't know, the accesses or uh, queries that you receive. Um, I had somewhere, uh, we connected uh, Google Analytics uh, to the web portal. Uh, I don't remember the last data from this report, but as far as I remember for the last month, about 100 uh, or 100 uh, and uh, 50 users uh, were uh, used, uh, were using uh, our web portal to find uh, the information. So for months, it's not too much. It's uh, just yeah. maybe ma maximum couple of uh, hundreds of users, but we, we are trying to um, make the MDR more visible for different communities, especially medical communities and uh, as far as we become as visible as possible, I think we will um, invite more users to use it. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, uh, and any other question for uh, for Sergey for the MDR? Otherwise, I have um, also a couple of questions for um, for Cedric for the BNL for the. Um, uh, talk uh, about PEL2. Um, so, first of all, this is something that we already discussed privately. So, the, the implementation of the plugin for the Lucifer catalog, the, as you said, you know, you confirmed that this is something that has been implemented for PEL, but this is quite uh, uh, standard, uh, I mean, general implementation that can be used by other communities. Of course, you know, as a GI, we would like to uh, use it also to, as uh, the next year we will have uh, Rusio and we would like to connect it to the Iraq. Uh, this is already a uh, uh, final, let's say, production version that you are going to use uh, um, in uh, when moving to to, to Lucio and uh, in the during the, the the winter break. So, uh, as I mentioned, we we have this uh, Bell Dirac uh, extension to to Dirac. Uh, well, that is tuned to 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 Bell to Snid. So now we have this uh, Russian file catalog part of this Bell Dirac. And uh, well, when we go into production with Russo, that means in January, so now something mm -hmm. like mid of January, we will use this. So uh, it will be production ready for, for Bell 2, uh, but it will be part of this Bell Dirac. So now, um, as I said, uh, yeah, as we, we discussed already, uh, so this, Implementation is whether, um, well, this is experiment uh, collaboration agnostic. So it could be potentially be used by uh, any collaboration. So that's why we plan to make a pull request uh, mm -hmm. to the Vanilla Dirac. And yeah, uh, once it's validated, it can be used by any collaboration. 
Very good. Thanks a lot. And uh, then another question, which is related also to the comments that Pedro made before. So if you have a uh, plan, uh, for instance, so as you said, you know, now you're, uh, um, you have the possibility to use uh, different protocols or and then uh, SRM. So you're using HTTP and uh, XRD and grid FTP as well. So uh, if you have um, any, so the endpoints that are um, uh, in the infrastructure that are uh, supporting Bell, if you have uh, any plans to switch, for instance, to HTTP for transfers or other protocols that in then uh, grid FTP, following, you know, what is be done, what is done in the WCG basically. Yeah, this is probably something that we we will do on the on the medium term. So well, now we the, the focus is migrating to a show. Uh, well, then yeah, this is definitely something that uh, that we can evaluate to move to SRM less and well GSFTP less. So well, this is also uh, depending on the on the outcome of the DOMA TPC uh, uh, result. So yeah. Uh, this is something we, we we probably will do on the on the medium term. Um. Okay. Um, if uh, I don't see uh, if there are no if there are other questions from the from the audience also for uh, for Bell and Cedric. If not. Uh, uh, we still have five minutes for the end of, to the end of the session, but uh, if I if there are no, no other questions, I think that uh, we can close the session here. And uh, oh, no, there is another question from Peter. Go on, please. Yeah, I always have some question. Uh, you mentioned <laughs> also Dynafed as a front end for uh, Object Store, and as far as I know, uh, RAL is working on XRD HTTP interface for uh, their CEF instance. So is this Dynafed still somewhere at least considered to be as a front end, or is it just some old information? Uh, yes, I mean this is something that uh, I mean for sure. Al is, uh, is also pushing to have uh, Dynafed um, as well. No, so no. This is something that we have discussed uh, also. I've seen also this presentation. <laughs> so. RAL is going to use XRD HTTP interface for their self storage. Okay, so, so it's ancient that... information about the RAL and Dynafed. Uh, hello, hi. Can this you? is hi. This is Ian. Uh, so we have both available. We already are using have Dynafed available on the Echo cluster so at the moment for. The main grid storage is using XRD and grid, grid FTP, but we're we've been using Dynafed for some time, and we're actively pursuing that where it makes sense and where that's what people need. Okay, thanks for the question. Sorry, I, I mean I, I just yeah. uh, you know I was I was <laughs> <laughs> this is something that uh, you know I'm not like uh, I was taking this information from uh, from uh, from you or from other presentation you know that I see. Yeah, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm reinforcing what you're saying. It is absolutely the case that it's it's there and it's available. Yes, um, I mean maybe Peter, you were for, you were uh, uh, referring to WCG only. This is what. Yeah, I am too Atlas focused. Yes, uh, could be that you know for sure. I mean. Could be that maybe there are like uh, use cases for uh, for uh, for for Atlas that where all the XRD HTTP is uh, the XRD uh, HTTP is going to be used while Dynafed can be used also for other communities. I guess. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks a lot. Um, do you have any question, uh, Peter, or someone from the audience? Otherwise, uh, I think that uh, we can close this session. I would like to thank uh, everyone that participated, the speakers, Sergey and uh, Cedric. And uh, as I mentioned, there will be uh, in uh, 15 minutes after the break, uh, there will be like a parallel session on the one data and then DPM and Dynafed. And uh, so this will be the one data in uh, Zoom of two and uh, room and uh, uh, DPM and Dynafed on Zoom of five. So thanks a lot if you want to you know, connect to the DPM clinic uh, calculator. Thanks.